Hello, in this tutorial we'll learn how to prototype, conceptualize a ring like this uh, with or the, without the ink and the bloom. I don't know if you can see the difference. And uh, I usually use Rhino to uh, model the rings that we actually make, 3D print or we uh, make a mold. And I use Modo for rendering, but I'm almost sure that we could do a lot of it fully in Modo. So this is one of the first attempt uh, to do the whole ring in Modo. And we could, uh, it could just be a concept, but in theory, we could 3D print from there or even make a mold. Um, if you're just doing concept, we can just use the torus here. We could uh, draw it interactively or we could just go geometry, unit primitive, in current mesh, the one selected, toroid. So think of this as a donut. So alt to orbit, scroll to zoom, alt shift to pan. If I'm far away, I can select this and go shift A. But you should know this by now. A quick way to turn this into a ring could be to go in polygon, so you can press 3. And here, something new, there's a tool called Deform Push. Very useful. It's like a scaling per normal. Uh, I used to use this a lot in Softimage back in the day. Uh, click. So it's going to push all of the uh, polygon from each center, from their own center, you see. So if you're really in a hurry, you don't want to model it, uh, that's one way of getting a ring. Q to drop. Uh, one thing you might want to do is turn it so it's facing you. Usually we model ring uh, facing front, so we can go E, and here we can tell it's the X, and we can put 90. The re and Q to drop the tool. The reason to do this in Polygon is so you don't have to freeze anything here. Uh, five to uh, go back to uh, object mode or just unclick polygon. We could size it uh, using the snap precision, but I would usually do this at the end. So right now it's a one meter, it's okay. Because I always found in Modo and in most software, you get better rendering, your light are to scale if you run a meter. Uh, even with architecture, it's fine. But when you go really tiny, 2-3 mil, uh, everything is off. Uh, you can still do it, but it's not the nicest. If you want to have this in smooth, we go tab in subdivision surfaces. Uh, but for now, we'll try to stay, uh, to stay um, low res. If I want the inside to be flat a little bit, one thing I can do, go in polygon, select two to give Modo a sense of direction, sorry, using shift, L to loop, then you can select two again, and L again. So now, if we add line using the add loop or uh, loop slice, um, we can give an illusion that this is harder by doubling the polygon. An even quicker way is just to go B, because B will add two lines on each side. Q, the bevel. So now if I go tab, I don't know if you can see here, we see it very well. Uh, maybe if I do a preview, F8, yeah, you see that line? So we can still do a better job if we grab those, uh, what we just made hard. I like this technique because in Rhino to do this, you'll have to do a Boolean, or it's much more work. And this, look, you can still play a lot with it. You can go in scale. Uh, you can, you see, scale it a little bit so we see more the, you could even try to scale it like this. It's not really what I want, but we could scale it in local Y to flatten too, but I think I'm happy with that. So you see now it'll be nice, much nicer to hold it like this. Here I want a little stone holder. so we can uh, kind of use the same uh, theory. We could go shift plus, uh, sh sorry, shift up arrow plus, I think it's soft image or something. Uh, so this is the same as going select, uh, grow. You see shift up or down arrow. 
shift a to uh, frame it well and as you can tell i selected the wrong one so i'll reselect we want those one shift up arrow down arrow to shrink shift up arrow yeah and now we can go b here and we can see in real time that it's giving us a little bumpy and that's good that's actually what i want um we could move it a hair higher like this so here usually what i like to do is deselect go uh, tab because i don't really want to tweak this i could actually bring them closer a bit but it's fine now what i want is to grab the top so i could again go shift up and go b here and I found in low res you can see better what you're doing uh, time to time. So this leave me the wall for the stone. Shift click to do another edge. Shift click again to maintain that edge. And I don't know how deep. Uh, if you're going to 3D print, you might as well go a little bit deep. Uh, so there's less material here. Voila. I think here we're good. So one thing I can also do is uh, I could flatten this sometime it's easier to put a stone inside if it's flat and you see on Y and move it down but here it really doesn't matter Uh, if you want to really uh, see that edge here, that depends on your design, you can go L and B. So now if you go Tab, you see that edge is very nice. It's not very, very smooth here, so we can go plus on the numpad, and that would really smooth it out. So now the plus on the numpad does this on the surface. If you want to see that render time, you have to go for here. Now here, there's a lot of interesting thing we could do. We could right click lasso rectangle, and then we could do this. We could, you know, maybe do something like this to bulge it a little bit. Uh, we could do things like this. There's a lot of things that could go into that. Um, or we could just play with that. Uh, now there's a tool I like to show in uh, Modo where I don't think it really matter if I select, but I'll show it to you with the selection, where we can use fall off. And fall off are great. It's a little bit like, uh, we saw it with the text. It's a little bit like uh, a gradient. So the most common one is usually linear that people use, but there are some like that are circular, like the radial. So you click and you drag from the center. And that's gonna be your, uh, the height the width I think voila and then with this you could use the move you could use the rotate I'm gonna use R to scale and just to show you that would recreate a very nice fall off you see and we could go here and go into ease in ease out actually I kind of smooth also I kind of love the ease in it's really strong it's a bit more than what I thought of doing but that's kind of interesting now you could move those fall off you see uh, here it's very uh, strong because I'm scaling quite a bit but yeah that fall off could be sometimes it's uh, it's hard to see who's doing what you can use plus and minus to make the the manipulator a bit wider but frankly usually you can do it without doing anything uh, you see that's my scaling I'll drop now to get rid of the fall off escape and five to get rid of polygon I think I'm, I went a bit crazy here but whatever why not uh, I also realized that I forgot to do the the stone uh, it could have been maybe uh, better to do the stone before and do the fall off after but uh, as you can tell, I haven't done any real soul. When I model things like this, time to time, 
it's useful to go mesh cleanup. Say okay, and often it'll clean a few uh, normal things like this that are inverted. Uh, you don't see a huge difference here, but trust me, uh, down the road it'll make a big difference. We could also pr uh, bring a pre-made diamond. If you want to use the same shape, you can create a new layer. So this is ring, and and we can call this stone. Now we could select this and go underneath, select what you want to copy, Control C, select the empty new layer, Control V, and here we can go thicken. Voila. I don't like how rounded this is, so, but before fixing this, we can look at the size. I think it could be much bigger, so we could go like this. And we might want this to go down a little bit too. So uh, we could select that polygon or we could just select the point. Shift click, middle click, huh? and move this here. Yeah, I think this is better. And uh, it could still be quite a, f a bit longer, so we could go like this. And you see, I should have used the fall off before. But we can mimic a fall off here because it's very low res. So I can go. Right. So here, here, go L and go to make it harder, B. And now I can tell it's too big, that's funny. Uh, Q to drop, deselect, R. Here, nothing selected, everything is selected. That's the motor way. I think just for a test, that's not bad. Uh, we just need this to go down and this to go up. So now what I can do, it's keep on uh, tweaking this. And uh, here, here, go W. A little bit, voila, that's nicer. Uh, if we would have done the follow-up with the stone, we would have not to do any of that. Um, voila. And I want this to be subdivided a bit more, so I can go plus, plus, and make sure to do um, surface and four here. Okay? And we could have made this a little bit harder too, but that's okay. From where we're gonna see it, I don't think it'll be a, a big deal. Uh, there's other thing we could do that I was I did just to goof around with the other one. Um, I, if I remember well, what did I do? Uh, yes, I took this one L. L and same thing here. I'm holding shift to select multiple and uh, actually we don't need this because that's going to cause us trouble. Control middle click to deselect a part you don't want. Yeah I think this is way enough. I don't even know if we need to go that up. Yeah maybe. Now we can go B to extrude and use the the red and that can give us also a bit of meat to uh, you can play with the scale to connect the ring together voila and I think I also did one here L this is just to make it sharper uh, nicer look here Uh, middle click, Oop. hold down control <laughs> to deselect, voila, control, and if I want this to be a hair sharper, I can go B, you see, and move it out of here. I'll create a dead line, something like this. 
shift click again so now we've got a nice little curvature inside so there's a lot of things that you can experiment with now I could even make this a bit harder um, I think I'm happy with this uh, now just to show you we can um, at this level you could almost merge both uh, right click merge we could always unmerge it Control D to make a copy and maybe rotate one of it like this and one of it like that something like this and what else did I do? I moved it I think I went a bit too far yeah. and uh, now the trick part is to select uh, all of the polygons so maybe we can untab uh, so I think here what's worth doing is to move it more and bring it back after because voilà. we do want to be able to select both um, I think it's a bit too far voilà. select both to be able to bridge uh, to weld them they need to be one again so merge and polygon and here I don't know any quick uh, fast way of doing this I have to select uh, you could do a actually maybe we can press L and deselect where we don't want the connection which is basically on the top control middle click and I think we could even stop here we don't need any connection here voila and then here you have to shift click the inside L to get the loop do the exact same thing control deselect what you the, the middle click where you won't bridge things and I think in my case it's somewhere here yeah and uh, oh I forgot this part I don't think we want to bridge here we could but would it do a big difference maybe actually not sure about that one no I think that step it's gonna cause issue so double click yeah this can be bridge so now there's no quick way it's going to be one and the other one bridge you click here Q actually there is a quicker way I just thought of it if you undo delete all of this and if you go in edges you can double click here to select the whole loop shift double click here and you could bridge edge to edge that should work voila so yeah there's always a and now we can test tab voila so we could have maybe got rid of this I just have to think a little bit more about those two the question is more do they really bug me or not or at least we could maybe try to bridge yeah we'll have to do a little bit of surgery here move this out of the way a bit a bit higher uh, I don't know if it's uh, I don't want to go too deep in this tutorial uh, modeling wise as you know we can uh, there's way more we could do so now I'm going to show you the shading um, the shading for this will be we could also now make it maybe uh, do a test and maybe harden that edge here mm, no it's not gonna oh, maybe that one yeah but it might look weird let's try that B I kind of like it once again guys huh, this is an experiment anyway I'm gonna be looking at this side so so for texturing uh, for the stone or whatever this is polygon and you can double click M I'll cut this stone one and here uh, double click 
uh, M stone two. And then finally, we could just uh, do the ring here. So M uh, ring. Voila. For the lighting, I would like this light to be uh, a directional light. I think it will look better. So we can go uh, change type to area light. Maybe we can bring it a hair closer. A little bit wider. Yeah, that's not too bad. For the backdrop, uh, I usually like to bring this up too just in case if I do a backdrop. Uh, a quick way of doing a backdrop, right click, cube, polygon, R, scale it, delete what you don't want. Uh, I don't want this, and I don't want this, this. Then I go F to flip the polygon, and B. To, and make sure there's a bit of uh, maybe eight, a bit of rounding here. Wow. In polygon, I can scale this more and then move this a little bit higher so it's on the floor. Voila. So now we can start uh, doing the render and uh, we can just. Uh, Go F8. Oh, it is floating a lot. Make this small so it won't be too long to render. Voila. And now for the back, you click here the and you go M and you call that uh, background. Here I don't want too much reflection on the back, so I go um, 1 here, AD for the perpendicular reflection, and I could make it a little bit wider too. Yeah, I also always like to check my light to see how much, and it does make a difference. So I could go and uh, maybe tune it down a hair. And uh, now we can start the shading. So I can go F6 actually, bring some sort of environment. So for um, for jewelry, it really depends. Uh, let's try this one. That will give me a very strong highlight. Uh, but it does throw a lot of blue here. Uh, let's try that one. This is very warm. Kind of like this one so far. Often the jewelry you don't need much on the floor anyway. So I just double click. Uh, we can actually go back to uh, F6 and now we can go and uh, under our material. So metals. bronze and we could try maybe burnish bronze drag and drop to here and now can we can see it uh, for the stone uh, I frankly have no idea what to put uh, I'll show you a funny one um, I could go car and there's some funny one here but actually quite complex candy apple red so this has metallic flick and you could put it here I don't mind it actually. If I can reach the back, you don't want to put it on the wrong thing. Voila. And uh, now, if you see all of those controllers, that's the area light and the texture. We can, um, we could turn the area light to get rotate on Y to get those highlights elsewhere. But I'm pretty happy with this. You can also say don't show locator and texture locator, so they won't be in your face. Um, what else? Um, I could do 
final color output as you know we could have a little bit of a bloom so I'll go a bit higher here remember the bloom is only at uh, at final render that you'll be able to adjust it always do a bit of tone map to tune down the saturation and in jewelry I usually use vignette so I'm looking for my vignette here maybe 80 maybe a hair more 130 so the corner are a little bit darker now to get a better render I can uh, go here I think this is very very shiny so maybe I can go 90 tune down a hair and the perpendicular too uh, to you can press zero to maximize this or minimize and here uh, for the render quality it's under here settings we could go 16 this you could put it down to 0 0.2 uh, this to at least 512 512 512 and this is the shadow 512 that's about it uh, what else can we do uh, if you want to play with the environment lighting maybe tune it down a hair 0 0.9 you see looks a bit more solid if you want to brighten up you just go a bit higher uh, actually one I think was pretty good if you want to turn the light it's here so on the uh, rotation and you could see 30 and we'll see the highlight turning here because it's just a roof I don't think it does much um, what else you could color a hair your light your area light uh, most light have a bit of yellow so you could put a grain of salt of yellow too that will help the gold and I think it's time to render uh, I'm gonna save it save as I don't have any texture here so uh, I don't have to consolidate any scene and I will call it uh, ring uh, and now we could go we could maybe find a hell of a better angle like this and uh, I'm gonna go F uh, F9 or render okay I'll pause uh, the video a little bit I could have made this a little bit thicker I could go back and uh, scale it that little line here uh, but it's alright see the bloom that's the highlight here so actually 140 is pretty good that's the intensity and that's how wide okay I'm happy with this save and um, we'll save it here so I can use it for a thumbnail um, I was shooting for this but as you can tell I I went sideways <laughs> but it's the same theory here I just you did I copy it four times